about being a real Christian, if you want to call it that, or being a, a transparent one, anyways, is the fact that God doesn't ask you to be something that you're not. He doesn't say, I want you to go out and be joy joy or happy happy or thrilled every single day of your life because he gave you other emotions. <laughs> In fact, he gave you sadness, sorrow, disappointment. He gave you lots of feelings that are part of the emotional psyche, as it were, that you are. And that's not a psychological term that's evil or anything. It's just a fact of reality of what the flesh is. And psychology and psychiatry lots of times is a study of the fleshly aspect of humanity. So you don't have to get too weirded out about it unless you, you know, can concentrate on some one aspect of it. But God created you with a full spectrum of emotions. And it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to be sad sometimes. It's okay to be sorrowful. Or in my case, like today, it's okay to be disappointed. You know, and the truth is, is that, you know, it's, it's rare that I get the disappointment that will carry beyond one day. And unfortunately, you know, when they do, they're so real. It's just such a overwhelming sorrowful feeling that I just go, oh, man, you know, and it's sad, you know, it's actually kind of a, a real drain, you know, on my emotions, and the Lord knows, you know, I mean, every time that I, I mean, it's rare, but when I am disappointed, because I no longer put my stock in the normal things that people get disappointed about, but, you know, the rare times that I allow myself to find a place of disappointment, it's very personal, very, you know, yeah, yeah, it took a while to get through and find it wherever it is that disappointed me. And I'm not going to get into it, but it's just, you know, and it's silly when you think about it sometimes, but the point is, is that Jesus comes to you in your disappointment and he touches you there. He wants you to share it with him. He doesn't say, don't be disappointed. No. He says, I know you're disappointed. And he wants you to be real about it, to express to him just what you feel and what you're experiencing and how you want to give it to him. Not to take it away, but to experience it fully with him. You see, God isn't about taking away everything that you're going through, but being with you in them. To help you to express them to him and to even, as strange as it's going to sound to you, to be thankful for them because it really makes you alive. It makes you the person you are today. Disappointment, like godly sorrow, can create in you a great effect in the sense that it brings your emotional being to the surface and you become tender towards others and you can become tender towards God and God can comfort you like he wants to comfort you. So don't be always, you know, shoving aside or forcing down or hiding from disappointment. Don't run away from, you know, the sorrows that you might feel or the the emotions that you might be experiencing today. Because God wants to share with you how he loves you and how he cares for that part of you that is tender, that he's been making more and more tender so that you would be less and less, you know, some cold, unresponsive person, but rather just like him. A man or a woman subject to emotions and able to feel the passions for God in a tender, sometimes gentle way, as well as the excitable ways. The king held out the golden scepter, so Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. It shall come to pass when he crieth unto me that I will hear, for I am gracious. We have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwells in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. <clears throat> we love him because he first loved us. Let us draw near with a true heart, in a full assurance of faith, 
having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. For through him we have access by one spirit unto the Father. We have boldness and come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Often what we need more than anything else is the Lord to be with us. Like I just saw my hummingbird fly by that would have stopped by except for I'm sitting here. But the Lord sends them often and then a dragonfly just came by and the Lord often sends me these little tokens of love to let His Holy Spirit show me that He is with me, that I don't need to fear or feel you know, as though I'm all alone and disappointed, but rather that He knows my disappointments and He cares how I feel. Not that He'll take them away, but that the disappointment is okay to have it. So be encouraged in that. Be real with your Father. Be accepting of Jesus as fully as He wants to be in your life. Because that's where really a Christian lives. Not where you do your ministry, but where you live, where you breathe in, where you have the emotions that God wants you to be fully experiencing. The love that is beyond any love you've ever known. The peace that is so tender and quiet in the midst of a storm. The, the joy that can be there in the midst of sorrow for tears and disappointment. And you can have all those all at the same time that God is standing there with you in the tenderness and the gentleness. They said it is mana, for they wist not what it was. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. The bread of God is he which comes down from heaven and gives life unto the world. Your fathers did eat marina in the wilderness and are dead. I think that should be mana. <laughs> in the wilderness and are dead. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. My flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. The children of Israel gathered, some more, some less. He that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered it every morning, and every man according to his eating. Take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God knows my need, and he's met it. God knows my wants, and he fills them. God knows my desires, and he shows me himself. And I find myself in great desire to know him more. And in those things, he allows me the freedom to have my emotions, whether joyful or sorrowful, whether sad sometimes or happy. But in all those things, God wants you and I today to share with him what we're feeling and being real alone with him so that we would be prepared for our day. Because, frankly, there's nobody that's going to love you like he does or accept you the way you are. So be real. Don't suppress all that's inside, but give it to God, and then in Him find rest.